My guest says the old model of healing is to pray for everyone based on a formula or getting worked up in the spirit. And you know, only a few get healed. The new model of healing is to hear from heaven before you pray. Why? God never fails. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Dennis Walker. I love the rarefied air of heaven. It is naturally supernatural, especially on this set, especially in your home right now. How would you like an angel to go to your bank and pay off all of your debts? Well, my guest prayed for someone and this happened. But you know, you come from such a godly heritage, you kind of provoke me to jealousy. Your parents <laughs> saw people like Branham and yeah. Alan. What did they tell you? Uh, tell me some spectacular thing they told you that, and you were a baby, you, you were yeah, taken was, to some of these meetings. Tell me, and so you were in that rarefied air of heaven, even right. though you, you didn't understand a whole lot. What did they tell you they saw? Well, one of the best stories was my dad told me that he was in a meeting with William Branham and actually was used to usher Branham out to the parking lot where there was a man who had died in the, the, a station wagon and that William Branham ministered over him and he was raised from the dead right in front of my dad's eyes. Uh, that's so, got to change someone forever. It does. When something yeah. like that happens. You see that. Wow. Now, when you were just a young boy, there, an evangelist came to town by the name of Tommy Hicks. That's right. And um, uh, you gave Tommy some money. That's right. How old were you? I think I was probably around five I th about five? that time. Yeah, five years old. And you had the chutzpah, that's a Hebrew word, the, <laughs> the, the nerve <laughs> to walk up and, and give Tommy Hicks. First of all, those that don't know who Tommy Hicks is, tell me about him. Well, Tommy Hicks was the guy who pretty much brought revival to Argentina. How did he do that? And well, the way he did it was he was sent by the Lord. The Lord spoke to him that he was going to use him in that nation. And so he went down there and he tried to have meetings in big in stadiums, but they wouldn't give him permission. It was a Catholic country and he couldn't have any permission to do that. So the only way he could get permission was from the president. So he went to the presidential offices and sat there all one day. And the only reason he got an interview with the president was someone slipped and fell and broke their wrist right in front of him. And God gave him the initiative to do what it needs to be done to heal that wrist. The guy took him in to see the president. President Juan Perón had a skin Ill, uh, ailment and, and Tommy Hicks was used to heal him of that skin ailment. And it opened up the door for carte blanche, whatever you want to do in the nation. But then after you had given Tommy Hicks that coin, what did he say to you? He put his hands on me and he said, that makes us partners. And he prayed over me at that point, just that God would use me in my life as well. And a number of years later, you had a prophecy uh, by, um, who was it, Engel? Lou Engel. Lou Engel. Yeah. Uh, and what did he prophesy over you? And he knew nothing about He this. knew nothing about this occasion. And we were in a meeting and, and uh, we we're told to turn to one another and, and pray over one another. And you know how, I don't know if you've ever seen Lou, he, he starts pumping the oil now, a little now bit. Now you may not know this, but I was raised in an Orthodox Jewish tradition. And when we daven, when we pray, we rock. We want every form of our body in harmony with what God is doing. Yeah, amen. If you look at the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall, we yeah. use rock. Yeah. Just like Lou. Just like Lou. <laughs> and what did he say? So Lou looks at me and he says, you have the spirit of Tommy Hicks all over you. So, And, it, and you then went to John Wimber's ministry. What yeah. impact did this have on your life? 
Well, John Wimber was such a, a eye-opening experience for the teaching that he did on healing because I came from a, a very strong Pentecostal background where you had to psych it up and you had to, you know, speak in tongues and you had to get it moving and then you'd grab the person, you'd shake them and shout and spit a little bit and uh, then you, <laughs> hopefully you saw them healed. Uh, but did you see many people healed when you did all the all the religious stuff? Rarely, rarely. I mean, to you, know that they were absolutely healed with the testimony and the whole thing, very rarely, okay. rarely saw what that. What did you learn at Wimberg's ministry? Well, what I learned was that you could dial down, get quiet, and actually calm down at that minute, and that God would speak to you, and whatever God spoke to you, you could you, you could say and do and, and move on that, and then healings would come. Okay, you call it the initiatives from heaven. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the initiative of this little girl that died. There you go. This was a good one because it really illustrates uh, how to receive this. What it is, an initiative is just knowing the instruction for the moment. And I'd gotten a phone call. I was pastor of a Spanish church in Las Vegas that we had started. And um, I'd gotten a phone call to go to the hospital because one of the daughters of one of the members of our church had drowned. And I wasn't sure in what state she was in. She'd been in the bathtub. And anyway, I went to the church and, or to the hospital on the way. I'm driving along saying, God, what do you want me to do when I get to the hospital? And I heard the clear instruction from heaven. You ask the parents what they want from me and whatever they ask of me, I will give it to them. That sounded very easy. But the moment I walk up to the parents in the hospital, the head nurse comes out and says, your daughter has passed away. So now it's a, a situation where it's not just that she's in a bad condition, she's passed away. And so the, the head nurse invited the parents to go mourn the loss of their daughter. But something rose up within me and I said, can I go in with you? They allowed me to go in with them. And then I went into the hospital, into the, the room where the baby was laying on a table, and I stopped the parents from mourning at that moment. I said, stop right now. What do you want from God right now? The very thing God had asked me to tell them, uh, ask of them, I yeah, asked Yeah, but them. that doesn't make sense to me. No, it Dennis. doesn't to me either. But it doesn't have to make sense. You, you were obedient. You, all you are is a good secretary. That's exactly right. You know what doesn't make sense? Moses, when an army is attacking him, standing over a, uh, the, the, the Red Sea and raising a stick. Now here you have a big army coming against him and his answer, a stick. Army, stick, makes no sense. But you know what, that's how the initiatives of heaven come. Very small actions that we do on earth that are born from heaven have a massive impact on the so earth. So what happened to this baby? There's no chance of this baby's survival. Well, the baby's they, dead. <laughs> it, the baby had passed away. And so I, the parents said they wanted their baby back. And I went over and I stood in front of the baby and I said, I command you, come back. And when I did that, I heard God's voice again speak to me and said, it's done. And what I've learned is when God says it's done, that really means you're done, time to leave. So I walked away. I didn't see what actually happened, but I heard the story. Uh, you say, I, you don't know if this is a true story? That's fair. Just go to our website and you'll see a live witness testify before her very eyes she saw this happening. Go to SidRoth.org, www.SidRoth.org, and you want to hear something crazy? This dentist is told to do something from heaven and he does it? And what would you think? I'll tell you what, come on back you'll find out exactly this outrageous, this mashuga. That's a Hebrew word for crazy thing he does. Be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back to It's Supernatural. For he himself is our peace. Who has made both Jew and Gentile into one. And broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself. To create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Один новый человек. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. I mean, I mean the only word I have is Meshuggah, a Hebrew <laughs> word that means crazy. This Dennis Walker hears from God. You like hearing from God, oh, don't you? I love it. You I would, like hearing from God. I heaven. wouldn't want to live without that. And have you found 
that the more you, it's a contagious thing, the more you hear from heaven, the more you hear, the more you hear, the, uh, and, and by the way, the, it works in reverse. The less you hear, the That's less right. you hear, the less you hear. I, I can't wait to find out how it, to. It's the old saying, use it or lose it. All right, when you say initiative from heaven, yes. what do you really mean? Define that. Well, it's instructions. It's concrete instructions from heaven. Uh, it's the same thing that Moses walked in. Moses got the instructions for every situation. So you have a specific need and then you have a specific instruction. And that instruction, when it's brought from heaven to earth by you, as you hear and you do or you speak, it just releases the power of heaven on that situation. Uh, you really call this a new paradigm, but it really isn't new. No, not it's at all. It's the original. That's right. It's the Megillah. It's the real thing. That's right. Uh, okay, so the real thing hits you. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do? What would you do if God told you to pitch a tent in your living room? <laughs> uh, what did you do, Dennis? I did it. I, the Lord told me that I was supposed to buy this tent and spend time with him in the tent, that he would meet with me in the tent, and he said, I'm going to restore to you the Feast of Tabernacles. What did that mean to you? That meant a time of learning how to live and abide with God. That I God mean, we would, Jewish people, we're, we're, in, we're in these things where we could actually see the stars out, out of these tabernacles that we were in. We call it Sukkot. And, mm -hmm. and, and we could re remark on the majesty of God. So you went through a feast of tabernacles in your living room. What did your right. wife think about this when well, she saw the tent <laughs> in her living room? She, she walked in and she said, doesn't that go up outside? And I said, <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, I said, well, you know, this is Las Vegas and it gets very hot out there. So this one's going to be inside and me in it. Okay, when you went into the tent because you were told to go into the yes. tent because God wanted to meet with you, what happened? I got into this tent and I started applying what it says in Colossians in chapter 3, which says, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. You know, seek third heaven is what it says. And then in verse 2, it tells you how. It says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So I started setting my mind on the things of heaven. Uh, you can do that because the Bible tells you what heaven looks like. So I was setting my mind on heaven and all of a sudden I'm caught into the scene. I'm brought into this experience in heavenly places. And then Jesus began to come and actually speak to me and teach me things and show me things. That must be so wonderful to be taught by Jesus. But when you think about it, Dennis, that's why we have the Bible. That's true. But when he taught you, um, what difference did this make in your life oh. from this time? That, uh, how, how, how long did you stay in the tent, by the way? Oh, I was there hours and hours and hours just every day. My wife was so gracious. She would protect me. I told her, if anybody knocks at the door, just tell them I'm gone to heaven. So, uh, did you would, go to heaven in the oh, tent? I did many, many, many times. Tell me one caught time. Into heaven. One time. Uh, well, I'll tell you, this one was, uh, I was caught up to a place that was a big white wall and there were no doors or windows. It was as long as I could see on either way and very, very high. And it was translucent. It was like catching the light from the the throne of God and, and reflecting it back. And I'm asking, where is this? And uh, the message I got was, you are in the archives of heaven. And so then I said, well, what would that be like? And they said, you come in. Well, I'd love to read the archives and I'd look up my name, did yeah. you? Yeah. Well, no, here's what I, it was more different than what I thought oh. it would be. Cause you know, you think archives, you think files yeah. and right. what I was, I was actually caught into a scene. And at first I thought, this cannot be heaven. But it was a scene like a low-lying cave, uh, very, very dank, dark, nasty atmosphere. How can this be in heaven? And then the Lord said, you're in the, the jail in the cave of Ephesus uh, or Philippi where Paul and, and Silas were beaten and thrown into the prison. And then they worshiped me until heaven came to earth in the and middle of the night. all the other prisoners heard them. I love they it. They did. And they were set free. The whole, the, the, it created an earthquake on earth because heaven and earth came together through their worship. Why did he show you that? He wanted me to see that those things are recorded in heaven. And then he took me to the next scene and the next scene was a tenement apartment and a, a lady sitting at the table weeping, shedding tears, asking God to help her raise her son in the hostile environment of the city she lived in. And the Lord said, every tear is remembered, it remembered here. Every tear is kept. Every scene of the saint's suffering is kept here. And then I asked, of course, why? 
why would you keep all this? And he said, this is the body of evidence that will be presented at the judgment of the fallen angels. That every tear that is caused by their sowing the seed of rebellion will be brought to trial and it'll be shown here. And he said that those things would be kept for eternity so that the inheritors of salvation, there, there would be a reason for this, for the angels to know, that this was especially kept for the angels. Now, you heard about the term even, initiative from heaven in this tent. Yes. Why is it important for, for, for you that are watching right now to understand the initiative of heaven and operate in the initiative of heaven. Why is that important? Uh, I think it's the answer and the key to everything we're, we're called to do. Jesus said, the works that I do, you'll do and even greater. For whoever believes in him, they'll do those works. But we have to do his works in his way. And that means that we do it how he said he did it in John 5, 19, where he said the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. Whatever the father in heaven does, the son on earth does just the same. And so there's this relinking and synchronization of heaven and earth as we do on earth what he's doing in heaven. And that's part of the Lord's prayer. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow, that's wonderful that you can do that. But oh, how about me? How about you? Can you do that? Can everyone do that really? Yes, yes. It's not just some special people. No, it's easy. It's, it's easy, I like that. We'll be back in a moment and find out just how easy it is. <laughs> We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Dennis Walker had a heavenly encounter where God gave him, for you, ancient keys to accessing supernatural power from heaven for every need you are facing on earth. Call now and get Dennis Walker's must-read book, Catching the Initiatives of Heaven, and his anointed audio CD teaching, How to Soak in the Spirit, both for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Through this life-changing book, you will learn five key steps to walking in the supernatural of God. Understand how to activate your spiritual senses to see and hear from heaven and then bring miracles back to earth. Jesus commanded his disciples to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to cast out demons. We're supposed to do that as well. And this is the key. This is how the disciples did it. This is how Jesus did it. This is how the prophets did it. Through this supernatural audio CD teaching, you will experience the presence in a powerful way. Begin to hear God's voice clearly. See heavenly visions. Experience emotional and physical healing. It includes anointed soaking music for you to experience supernatural peace and power. Yes, Lord Jesus, we worship you. Don't miss out on getting Dennis Walker's must-read book, Catching the Initiatives of Heaven, and his anointed audio CD teaching, How to Soak in the Spirit. Both yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9098 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Dennis Walker, and we're talking about what he calls initiatives from heaven. Now, if God is initiating something, it is a done deal. Right. It will happen. So, Dennis, you find yourself in Peru, of mm -hmm. all places, and you get an initiative from heaven. What were you told and what happened? I was right in the middle of a, a teaching that I was doing, and right in the middle I hear the Lord say, Whoever will run up to the front right now, I'm going to pay off their debts. And so I stopped. I've learned that you follow these things right when they come. And so I stopped and I said, whoever will run up here right now, the Lord said he's going to pay off your debts. You know, you say exactly what he said. And I thought, yeah, every, you know, you, all you are is a good secretary. I like to right. refer to myself as a good Jewish secretary. Me too. That's all we are is we're good secretaries. But some of you are not hearing the initiatives from heaven. This is what happens when you do. Yeah. He sees, hears an initiative from heaven. He says, some, uh, someone, some of you are in debt. Come run it. Did you tell him? Run up here. Run up here. What happened? Well, at first, I, I thought everyone would run up, but nobody, nobody did for a long moment. I mean, it was like uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden, a lady grabbed her husband and dragged him to the front. And uh, they came up, and so I just proclaimed over them, I command right now, your debts are paid off. And I went on and finished my teaching. Well, I didn't really hear back about that for one year. 
And it turns out this couple were from a, another city, 300 kilometers distant from where we were actually having these meetings. And the following year, I was in their city, and the lady says, you want to hear what happened? I said, yeah, tell me what happened. She said, when I got home two days after this event, where I'd said your debts were canceled, she went to the bank to make a payment on this huge loan that was, she didn't think that she'd ever finish paying off. And uh, goes to the bank window, and they said, this has been paid off. So she asked, well, when was that? And they looked it up, and it was the very day I'd commanded that to be done. It was done that day. And then she said, well, who paid this off? And they, they looked on the computer and called over the guy who had dealt with the transaction. And he looked at her and he said, don't you remember? You came in, you counted out the bills, I gave you a receipt, you don't remember this? And she kind of walked away and said, oh, oh yeah, now I remember. But uh, <laughs> it turns out that God had sent an angel. She didn't remember it. She was never she there. She was never there. God sent an angel, and what the angel do? The angel Took paid her off place? this debt. Yeah came in the form of a, a chubby, fat, uh, Peruvian woman. And just like her, where the, the teller could look at her two days after the event and said, it was you, and paid off every bit of that debt. I love the initiatives from heaven. Oh, me now, too. You, you, you tell us how to be able to be sensitive yes. to the initiatives from heaven. Uh, and one of the things you talk about, you learned in the tent. Yes. It's called soaking. Explain right. what that is. Well, soaking is when you're going to exercise your spirit into being aware of what's going on in heaven. See, what I believe is that when you're born again, that your spirit comes alive and all five of the spiritual senses come alive in you. And so you can actually practice these things by just getting quiet and learning how to focus your mind, focus your inner visions on the things of heaven. And so that's what I did when I came into the tent. I focused my mind on heaven according to Colossians 3, 1 and 2, and all of a sudden I'm brought into this place and there was just this proliferation of signs and wonders and miracles and these initiatives that would start coming and it just it has totally changed my life but, but people don't need a tent to no, do this you don't it's it, it you would ju you would just as i understand lay in that tent and you'd have the music and you would you, you would actually soar to the heavenlies exactly. by faith exactly you know what it is is any place you can come away into like a secret place. Jesus spoke of this in Matthew 6. Get into your secret chamber, close the door, and pray to your Father who sees in secret. And then everything else after that was all about provision. It was about the, the hand of God coming on your life. And uh, I believe that you can do that if you don't have a tent or a secret place. Find a box to put your head in because it's all about... <sighs> <laughs> well, you know, in the, the Azusa Street Revival, I know that. Uh, William Seymour literally did that. He did. Until God gave him an initiative. So he operated under the initiatives of heaven. That's Tell right. me when you, when you uh, went, you, 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 you went for a plane ride uh, without a plane. <laughs> without a plane, <laughs> that's right. Uh, I had gone into the tent one day, and in the tent, you know, I always was coming into heaven, but this one day was different. A different experience. I was expecting to be caught into a scene in heaven and see things in heaven, but this time I was going over geography. I saw the ocean going be below me very fast, and then a mountain chain and going along the mountain chain, then coming down a valley in the mountain. And I realized all of a sudden this is the Huayaga Valley in Peru. I, cause I know that because I'd flown down that same mm -hmm. path in airplanes before. So I uh, flew, right, flew right into the city right into the house of our pastor of the city of Wanaco. And he had just recently called and said that he had to retire from ministry because he was diagnosed, diagnosed with severe heart condition. And they told him, if you continue under this stress, you're gonna die. And so suddenly I'm standing beside his bed. He's asleep and his wife next to him. And I laid my hand on his chest and proclaimed healing. Went around on the other side of the bed, laid my hand on her head and proclaimed a renewed experience in the Holy Spirit. And uh, partly I did that because when she was baptized in the Holy Spirit, she went 10 days that she could not speak her native language. And she, she was speaking in a supernatural language. Her native language was Spanish, right. but she could not speak Spanish for, did you say 10, 10 days? 10 days, yeah. At four, day four, he called me and said, will she ever speak Spanish again? I said, yes, don't worry. She's gonna be a wonderful, it'll be a wonderful change in her life. So, and, and what did the doctor say about his heart? Well, we called him two days later. We got a hold of him, I called him and said, how's your heart? And he said, it was amazing. Two nights ago, he said, I had an encounter in the middle of the night with the Lord, and all of a sudden I have no pain. And I said, well, how about your wife? How about Doris? 
Well, she has begun to speak in tongues again, the heavenly language. And now for the last two days, she hasn't been able to speak Spanish again. And actually, she went 15 days on that occasion without being able to speak her native language again. So the things you, I proclaimed were done. Do you have an initiative from heaven for us right now? Yeah, I do. You know, I, I really felt like the Lord said that there are people listening right now that you've been having a high-pitched buzzing in your ears and that right now God is going to touch your ears. What he wants you to do is take your two fingers and just hold them for a second in your ears. Do it after I'm done talking uh, and hold it in your <laughs> ears for a second and then pop those out. And I believe you're going to sense that something has happened right now. Okay, here's what I believe also. Not only that person, but if you will put your fingers, but not all the way so you can hear, I want you to look in the camera and pray that we hear initiatives from heaven. That's Would a great you do deal. that right now? I will do that. So right now we just proclaim that every spirit of deafness, every problem with you being able to hear by the Spirit, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. I proclaim that thing will come off of you, that your ears will open, and I proclaim right now that the eyes, the ears, the spiritual sense of taste, touch, and smell are being activated as we speak. There's such a peace in this studio. Yeah. Someone's back has just been healed. But faith without a corresponding action, Dennis will tell you, is dead. That's right. God is fun. It's time to jump into the water. Make Jesus your Lord. Repent of your sins. Say, Jesus, you're my Lord, and come live inside of me. Do it right now. Dennis Walker had a heavenly encounter where God gave him, for you, ancient keys to accessing supernatural power from heaven for every need you are facing on earth. Call now and get Dennis Walker's must-read book, Catching the Initiatives of Heaven, and his anointed audio CD teaching How to Soak in the Spirit, both for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Through this life-changing book, you will learn five key steps to walking in the supernatural of God. Understand how to activate your spiritual senses to see and hear from heaven and then bring miracles back to earth. Jesus commanded his disciples to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to cast out demons. We're supposed to do that as well. And this is the key. This is how the disciples did it. This is how Jesus did it. This is how the prophets did it. Through this supernatural audio CD teaching, you will experience the presence in a powerful way. Begin to hear God's voice clearly. See heavenly visions. Experience emotional and physical healing. It includes anointed soaking music for you to experience supernatural peace and power. Yes, Lord Jesus, we worship you. Don't miss out on getting Dennis Walker's must-read book, Catching the Initiatives of Heaven, and his anointed audio CD teaching, How to Soak in the Spirit. Both yours for a donation of $25. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9098 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. After spending 30 days in the spirit realm, I want you to meet a man who can now switch on the ability to see into the invisible world. Learn how he uses this gift for emotional and physical healing and how he teaches others to turn on this gift.